What's going on? Welcome back, family. I'm so happy to see you once again. We are back with another reaction video. Grab your snacks, grab your drinks, because it's about to get real interesting. I was just thinking, it's so crazy that we are living in a day where we could just wake up in the morning and text our grandma or our mom and tell them like, hey, did y'all see the aliens at the mall yesterday? Like, can you believe that? Can you believe that's the dates that we are living in right now? I mean, there's those of us who already know and had that feeling this whole time that things may not be as they appear and there's always something going on that we may not be aware of, especially just the general public. But for the ones that know, have always known, and here we are today, still bringing light to those things that people still don't believe in or doubt. Per usual, guys, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and read you guys a truth or trivia question and we're going to go over the answer at the end of the video. If you guys want to skip to the reaction videos, go ahead and do so now and we'll see you there. But as for the trivia question, here we go. So the question is, this should be an easy one. What did explorer Admiral Byrd allegedly discover during his expedition to the polar region of the Earth? What did explorer Admiral Byrd allegedly discover during his expedition to the polar region of the Earth? And that is A, elves making toys, B, the edges of the flat Earth, C, alien star bases or d entrances to the hollow earth i think a lot of us are familiar with this already but go ahead and drop your answers down below and then we'll review it at the end of the video so without further ado let's go ahead and get into these reaction videos wait just kidding before we get started go ahead and like share subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you could be one of the very first ones to get verified when a new video is released come join the family and have some fun with us let's get into it Bye, Miami. Okay, so a few nights ago, over 50 cops and helicopters were called over in a shopping mall area in Miami, Florida. Why were there so many cops? This is just rumors and witness reports that there were 7 to 10 feet tall creatures and beings running around the shopping area and attacking people. Now, the other report is there was a few gangs fighting amongst the shopping area and teenagers running around fighting each other with sticks and stuff. So you're telling me that many cops and helicopters came for a little teenage gang fight? And why were there so many flight delays in Miami? that day. All of this wasn't even being reported by the media and covered up by that whole Epstein list. That video is quite interesting. I guess they're giving us a whole bunch of scenarios if it is a distraction to let us know like, hey, which one do you want to believe in? Is it the kids fighting or is it these aliens? As always, you know, they give us a couple of choices. So that way it lets our mind wander and we can just go ahead and choose what reality we want to live in. Is it the kids fighting or is it the aliens? Now, I did see a few videos with people that stated they were actually there. Some of them were saying that it was almost supernatural. Um, It looks like nobody really has a good or clear picture or image of it but they stated that it's almost like they were coming in and out of this dimension now we also have a lot of videos where they are using project bluebeam to make things appear that are not real so tell me guys what you think down below they said they weren't scared of us at all i don't know who you believe in what entity what higher power but you need to start believing in something miami because they hear it men in black ain't got nothing on this you think the bible is boring you might want to take a seat for this one in case you missed it a couple of nights ago there was absolute chaos that broke out in Miami apparently caused by a couple of kids fighting but this many police cars for kids fighting Miami International Airport airspace shutting down and 30% of Miami losing their power the math ain't math multiple witnesses reported seeing 8 to 10 foot creatures walking the streets and this is where we need to buckle up Genesis 6 4 says the Nephilim were on the earth both in those days and afterward when the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them this is what we call the Nephilim aka fallen angels aka demonic beings they're real and they've been here the only reason you're seeing it now is because the spiritual veil is thinning day by day because the king of kings is on his way you cannot say that you believe there are angels on this earth and not also acknowledge that demons are present as well as chilling as it is we are watching biblical prophecy unfold right before our very eyes these are the birthing paints so yes the nephilim are very real the spirit of fear is not welcome here and those in christ jesus are covered by his blood Woo! Okay. Okay, so at in the Miami Mall, they stated that these beings were what at least 10 feet tall to 12 feet tall. That's not really that tall. I mean, it will be crazy to see somebody that tall, but I feel like the Nephilim will be a little taller. I don't know if you guys are familiar with any scriptures in the Bible that talk about the Nephilim. Let me know if you guys know exactly how tall that they state that they would be. 
But other than that, it's still super interesting in regards to people saying that it looks like they came into our realm. It was almost like they were glitching in a way. And some people also said it was almost like they were getting unveiled. It looked like it was coming off almost to make them visible to us. And I know a lot of things are happening as they are in the Bible. So that is pretty interesting to look at it like that. But another thing, I did not know that all that power was out. Okay, I really don't, I mean, first of all, the boys could have been twins, the man could have been taken out with some type of software or whatever that people use, you know, everything on the internet is super crazy and not even real nowadays. So I'm not even worried about none of that stuff because there's way too much more, too much more stuff going on in this world for me to be worried about two little boys that got the same bike and the same shirt on. Yeah, let's keep it moving. The stuff that's going on right now. I didn't care about nothing that happened in that video. Now they're on the beach. This is somewhere in New York, upstate New York. That boat says white line. It's got a boat crashes in. Right? White line, that's what the that's what it says, right? I think it's like an oil rig or something like that. Right? Now I'm giving y'all clues. This is what this movie's about. Clues. Why would that do that? Because they're showing you something is coming. Something is coming. Catch on to what I'm showing you. Catch on. Mm -hmm. That's an oil rig. Get out of New York City. Right? That's what the movie's about. That's just one Get out of New York City. Yeah. I myself have not seen that movie yet, but I'm super excited to still see that. I know a lot of you guys mentioned that the ending was a little bit disappointing, but I don't think that is the main <laughs> issue or like the main idea of the movie i think this probably has just a lot of subliminal stuff in it that we need to pay attention to um i don't even think the ending probably even matters it's just the full effect of the movie and who made it which was the obamas i think it's just a little bit deeper than that you know let me know if you guys recommend it i've received two extremely disturbing letters or a letter and an email one from a mainstream media tv company one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks as well as some pretty stupid stuff and like uh, this, this litany of astonishing rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that i absolutely refute so what exactly are these allegations Take a look at this. These allegations only come after Russell has started to expose how the system works against us and how it intends to keep you there. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated 
repeated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you, you're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles, Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist, Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me, like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. In the meantime, I want you to stay close Stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. That's a very serious allegation, but also it's a sensitive subject just because there are so many people that are as actually abused and they're very serious and they're very important to talk about. And for the people that are doing this, it's very important to call them out, of course, and make them deal with the consequences. But it seems like it's so confusing now to decipher who is who. This is just my opinion on it. I will never defend anybody that is a PEDO, but at the same time, like I mentioned, I think it depends on how these people react to it, depending on if they are guilty or not. Russell seems like he's very much ready to defend himself and speak out about it and be loud about it and fight for his rights. You can see that the people that are guilty, the energy shifts when somebody brings it up to the table or asks about it, and they almost get a little shifty and dodgy. And it is very awkward energy. You can just feel it. You know, you almost don't really believe what they're saying. But it seems like when somebody's very assertive like this and they're ready to talk about it, I feel like a lot of those people are innocent. Surprise at what the Catholic Church has been doing behind our backs and how so little we know it has done. Do you think what is being said is credible? Put your ideas below. TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. Now, the Sumerians wrote all about this, and we're told it's fantasy. It's absolute history. The Chaldeans, a lot of which we don't have because it's all been hidden, all these things that we do today have been around for 25, 35,000 years. It's just that what happens is, is when humanity gets to a place where we're ready to break free from the controllers, and what they do is they hit us with fear. They will create a scenario which puts us into a space of fear. And what that does is that it drops our frequencies back down. Why have they not gotten investigated? I mean, I know they went through like the basements and everything and found a lot of horrible stuff down there. But what are they doing next? I guess nothing because they have so much power about it and they're probably in charge of everything. So where do we go from here? Really, the power is in the people, and as long as the people keep supporting that type of BS, they're going to stand strong, and they're going to manipulate the populations and control everything else that is going on. First of videos in downtown L.A. are wild. Look at you, you Come, come, come. can't see a screen or anything. Also, this was making people freak out on the street. Never heard of Asgard's Wrath 2, but now I'm curious. So is that Project Bluebeam? Is that how it works? And also, how does it work? What are they using to project those things? Is it a projector? Or is it some type of vibrations that appear 
in solid forms like that, in solid pictures like that to a T where it's just perfect and it looks like a real thing. And that brings me back to Miami. You know, can they only do it up in the air or can they do it through buildings? Like, how does this work, really? That line in your house? Not, uh, my, my, I did growing up. Yeah, not currently. I have that. But so what would you do then? If I... If all- Wait, I kind of missed it at the beginning, but I think she said, did you guys have a landline in your house? All of a sudden, all the internet went out and you couldn't make a phone call. I would just stay home. You need to call somebody. Yeah, I'll call. I would use... I'm going to get you a landline for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> My mom lives close. I'll just walk to her house. Okay. Yeah. The Wi-Fi is working. We are seeing ongoing cyber attacks across the country. Early on in the movie, your character, Julia, is almost freaking out when the Wi-Fi is not working in the house. Do you relate to that behavior? Um, Not really. I mean, I'm not as anyone who tries to get me to write an email back to them will tell you. I I don't check it a lot. I'm not good about that stuff. And you, Mahala, I read in the production note that you said you wouldn't go anywhere without GPS. You wouldn't leave your home without it. Yeah, somebody else has already brought that up. I'm regretting saying that now. But um, yeah, I, I uh, rely on... We're going to work on your math okay. skills. We're going to work on them. <laughs> yeah, good. You think you would be lost without internet? I mean, not spiritually, but like, I mean, physically maybe. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Waze is probably my favorite it's app. Good. It is so good. And there are times, you know, where I have to go someplace, I have no idea where it is. And it really, it, it's an incredible tool. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible tool. Um, and it's a lot easier than something called a Thomas guide, which neither one I know, of like, you, wait, oh I know my God. Is. And there's, there's so not helpful, not useful. <laughs> you have to pull over. You're like this, you're like this. You're trying to yeah. find the point that you're going. It's a map. Yes. Okay. But it's a book. You have to turn okay. pages. It's, you, we also have that in France. It's another name. Yeah. I know what that is. <laughs> something like ways is like a magic trick for the new world. How do you think, the social media has affected your work and your career? Oh, gosh. I think it's had no effect on it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I'm curious what you would say. What do you think? I think the biggest, like, I think, <clears throat> I think, um, like, social media, when I got it, it was like a, like a digital photo book. It was just for me and my friends, and mm. I could kind of do whatever I wanted, And it was like fun. And now it's become like a free marketing tool or a networking tool. So it's like blended personal and business. And that gets really tricky. Does it feel like a chore? It can feel like a chore. It can also feel like I'm not allowed to do what I want to do on it. Or I'm afraid like, like, like my social media has now become a lot less personal than it has been Mm -hmm. um, to protect my privacy. And uh, so that's how it's changed for me. But it does feel like a chore. You think Shout out to Waze for always taking me the wrong mother way almost every time. No, but yeah, shout out to them for making it so much easier. I remember thinking like back in the day of us using like MapQuest or anything like that. But I also had um, somebody teach me on how to actually, if you go in, into like a 7-Eleven, you get a map of the area that you're in where you go ahead and look and see where you're located and how to track yourself from there. So that's definitely important. I would suggest for everybody to go ahead and learn that um, because if your phone goes out, what are you going to do if you don't know the area, especially if there's any type of like rivers or anything, mountains, anything like that going on. But also it's not just the internet or the Wi-Fi going off. It's like, what if our actual power goes off where you cannot charge your phone and even look at a map, you know? So it's always good to have a map of your surrounding area or wherever you feel like you're going to be going to have that stashed in wherever your prepper stuff is. That's very, very, very important. But on a side note, isn't it crazy how they just kind of brought that up? Like, why would you bring that type of subject up for the internet to be going out? You know what I mean? I know it's about the movie, but still, why are we talking about that, really? You think a mighty nation like this would have the Washington Post and the New York Times and don't have CIA agents and FBI agents on? You think the evening news ain't got agents on there that we grew up with? We 
think they are the game they play and the power that they have, the real ones. I told the audience last night, if ever I took over America, I'd make you black folks apologize to white folks because you mad at the wrong white folks. The white folks you mad at couldn't help you if they liked you. Do you think what is being said is credible? Could our government have spies in our media controlling everything and everyone, or is this just a bunch of lies? What do you think? TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. You know, we're really stupid enough to believe that the Ku Klux Klan, a bunch of ignorant that can't read or write, determines public policy. The Tea Party, do you think the Tea Party, businessmen in America is the most powerful, cruel, evil, most of them? on the planet. You think they would let the Tea Party shut this government down if they didn't want it? They don't like Man. Y'all gotta think about it. 99% of things that happen are very strategically planned. Some people think shit just happens, right? It just it just happened. Like it just happened yesterday or just happened say That's not how it works. That's how they want you to think it works. But that's not how it works. Everything is strategic to them. The people that we're mad at is the public. Regular old pedestrians walking around. We get mad at those people, you know, for whatever reasons, the school boards or the managers or just race to race. And for as long as that we do that, we're not going to see any type of difference. The rules and regulations, the policies the real importance decisions that are made are from the higher ups, people that we can't even imagine or fathom. And all that we can really do is stay strong together. Do not give into this division type BS because that's another illusion. But no, we have to start with ourselves and really be the examples for the population, for our communities, for our children, because they're going to pick up on that and it's going to ripple effect from there. To trust reels, they can't be bothered with that stuff. Those are toys. That's not permanent. You can always lose the hand. It can always burn out. You can always die. And next to trust reels, they don't value gold or silver. They value genetics. So what they do is they will come in, conquer a race, and genetically alter it. And it is the genetics that they put inside these races that alters their frequency, their sound, their thoughts, everything about them. Isn't it crazy that they're saying that these extraterrestrials will come here and genetically modify our DNA? That's very odd because what's going on right now with our food? Our food is genetically modified. So it seems like somebody's already trying to do that. But now are these people in charge humans or something more than that? Apparently the greys were much more human looking at one time. They, as a race, were captured approximately 893,000 years ago. According to Mornay, the first thing they did was they slaughtered almost all of the women. The reason they do that is to control the birth process. And what they did was they started to genetically alter the women. That's another thing. They are already using birth control. They are already using all kind of tactics for us to not be able to have children, to not reproduce, to have all kind of uh, reproductive issues. That is going on so much right now that I know that it's not natural. And I know that most of the things that's happening is coming from food, but also the vaccines and all the chemicals that we take. For example, they did state that if you take a vaccine, you are more likely to have a miscarriage right after that up to like two years. So it seems like everything that he's mentioning is already being played out. The females of that race so that all the children born after that were genetically altered. Be careful who you let touch you. Watch this. I'm not going to take that one. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. You see, you're looking for my energy, but you can't access it. It's not accessible. You see, your energy, I've overpowered it already. You understand? In the name of Jesus, I've already overpowered it. Do you understand? Because you know where it is. You know where it is. You know where it is. You're trying to access it, but you can't. You're trying. That's why you keep touching it. But that's why I gave out my hand because I know regardless of whatever you're doing, it won't work. You understand? I can already see in your eyes that you're playing with something. I'm telling you now, repent now. Repent now. Witches and devils are... Yo, this was what I was talking about. So we need to stay firm. Even in little situations like that, it's a boundary. It's a no.
You know what I'm saying? If you do not want to be touched, if you do not want somebody to cross your boundary, let them know and speak loud and really let them know what you're about. Okay, so that way, maybe they won't play with the next person because you set that boundary. Now they know that not everybody's about to be super nice and super fragile with them. Where you can cross that personal field and that personal energy and, you know, get occupied by whatever they're trying to do. No, you know, stand your ground. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Very interesting, perfect timing, and coincidental. Which nothing is a coincidence. And what makes me look at it with, uh, hmm, is that first of all, they did the 666, which is what it is. We already know. Then they did like the gun sign with their hands. And this is for a school. So what is going on there? How did they decide to use those clips for this specific commercial or preview? And then also we have a giant where we just experienced in Miami. And now they're showing us a giant in this video also getting uncloaked, which is what I just talked about, about the Miami video. People stated that it's almost like they were uncloaked with whatever they were hiding th themselves with. So what is going on here? Also, who is this man in the video? Who is this giant? Comment down below because I've been asking that question, but I still have not looked into it. So singer Rihanna is promoting her shoe collab with Puma called Fenty. I'm going to show you the weird commercial and then get into why this is disturbing. Now that's a pretty strange and unsettling shoe advertisement, but it's about to get even darker. Man, I, before we even get started with this video, not Rihanna. We have nothing left. What do we have left, y'all? They they got Rihanna. They got Rihanna. It's not fair. This here is Geo Forbisi, the designer for Rihanna's shoe collab with Puma. Rihanna can even be seen on Forbisi's website wearing some of the designs. On Puma's website where they promote Rihanna's shoe, you will find they have designs for children. Now it's time to take a look at some of Forbisi's Instagram posts, which seems to be getting scrubbed from the internet. You're about to find out why. Bro, this is insane. I know what to do. Let's get into this. Corey Yeshua is the man of the century. I feel like his content is incredible. And the research that he does is something that I don't see anybody doing. I don't know if they don't have the time or they don't have the smarts to do what Corey Yeshua is doing. He's doing a lot more than me. That's why I listen to his videos. Now, this video about Rihanna's new uh, Fenty shoe collection uh, that she partnered with Puma. When I saw this video, I was blown away. And, and, and I'm telling you, I've been doing this for like five I'm blown away too because like I said, we just had so many good movies and we had so much good music and it was like all a lie. Like, what can we have that's still good from Hollywood, you know? And that's what really disappoints me. I just want to still have those good shows and those good movies and the, the good music, you know? But they're just taking it all. Five years now, there's not many things that will make me feel blown away. But the coincidences, a coincidence, I don't know what the, how multiple coincidence is. Is it coincidences or coincidence? Anyway, somebody smart to let me know in the comment section. Anyway, the way that these things line up from the person who helped with the collab, the designer, all the way down to pizza and all that other stuff, y'all know what that is. It's crazy that this could be a coincidence and not already pre-planned and thought through. They're literally doing these things in plain sight. And we're too consumed with purchasing and being the consumer of merchandise and, and, and consumers of entertainment. They live in their life right in front of us and we don't catch it. So shout out to Corey Shure. Y'all need to follow him. Let me roll this clip so y'all can see how crap. Y'all, just like one more thing. It's like, I just feel like God is just removing all these things because he does not want us to live 
of this earth. Like we live on this earth, but he doesn't want us to be consumed and live off of this world. So he doesn't want us to be consumed by the fashion. He doesn't want us to be consumed by that music. He doesn't want us to be consumed by idolizing these celebrities. We used to, but you know, the people that are waking up, these things are not sitting right with us anymore. And it's like, we can't keep doing it. It's very uncomfortable, you know? It's like growing pains, but spiritually. So I think this is why it's happening. But this is what I want to know. Are these celebrities in tune with what's going on? Or are they just like regular people where some of them are just not woke and some of them are, you know? Where maybe Rihanna doesn't really understand fashion is just fashion to her she loves it she's a designer she's just working with another designer and she's just keeping it moving maybe she doesn't know the bigger picture but at the same time for me that's a little bit hard to believe guys at this point i don't want to believe it but how do y'all feel about it do you think that everybody in hollywood knows exactly what they signed up for or do you think there's still some musicians and actresses and actors that are just doing their thing and kind of don't have a sense on what's really going on or am i just making up excuses for them at this point you know because rihanna is one of my favorites and i don't want to believe that about her but it is what it is I don't know guys comment down below and tell me how you feel about this we are at the end of the compilation and i'm so happy you guys got to join me i hope you guys had a good time i know that i did but before we end the video i'm gonna go ahead and review our truth or trivia question what did explorer admiral bird allegedly discovered during his expedition to the polar region of the earth the multiple choice of the answers we have here is a elves making toys b the edges of the flat earth c alien star bases or d entrances to the hollow earth and the correct answer is d entrances to the hollow earth this is a very interesting subject and as a lot of us know admiral bird actually had a journal when he was taking this trip so we do have a few good details about his experience but if you are interested in the subject i definitely recommend that you guys go look up some videos or read some articles about him but guys for now that is it and that is all i want to welcome you to our youtube family please like share and subscribe hit that notification bell down below so you can be one of the first people to be notified every time a new video is released for everyone that has subscribed and liked the video for a very first youtube reaction video last time i want to say thank you guys so much and welcome but for now guys everything is everything be good and do right and i'll see you on the next one